What's up everybody and happy Sunday. Yes, today is Saturday, but you guys are watching this on a Sunday, so happy Sunday. I hope you guys have had a great weekend. Um, today, I'm not even gonna BS around. You guys know what we're getting into. I asked you guys on the last video if I should do this, and I figured if nothing else for a good reference, we're gonna be able to put this, uh, this engine together and make a video out of it. So, without further ado, you guys can see that I kinda have the parts laid out pretty much in the order of where they're gonna be. You can see there's the crossover pipe, kind of goes around here. You can see each of the gaskets that go on each of those, the valve covers, the valve cover gaskets, the center plenum, pretty much the orientation of how it's gonna go out. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. And so, I mean, let's get started, let's get into it. Okay, one thing that people ask me a lot, a lot especially on like my Instagram and that type of stuff. And I try to answer people's questions, but I'm gonna show you on this video, because it is on here, how do you pick up the engine? So a lot of things that I do, even with the engine in the car, is you can see that I wrap it through here and then I put the chain to itself. And then on here, I actually devised a little thing. I used a longer bolt on here. So I had a pickup spot for the head. However, if you're not using a head and you're trying to pull the engine out of the uh, car itself or just to pick it up. Let me show you kind of what I do on this engine over here. Um, I usually will wrap a chain from the intake manifold that goes under here and kind of comes out from here and goes around. So the chain will be actually picking up the intake manifold because it is bolted down and then the other part will go through here and then loop to here and pick the whole engine up that way. So for those of you that are asking, that's why or that's how I pick up the engines um, without any damage. I've had no issues with it. Some people are gonna say, isn't the intake manifold gonna crack or aren't you gonna ruin the timing cover or something like that. I've never had an issue with it. You guys have seen, I've done 100 engines. Um, so yeah, if you guys are gonna pick it up, that's the way that I suggest. And a lot of you guys are asking about this. I've had people send hate comments, that type of stuff. I mean no disrespect with the Bad Religion flag. Bad Religion is a band that I've listened to for, I can't even tell you, it's been like 25 years. Um, I grew up a SoCal punk. Uh, I'm part of the punk scene. I love like punk rock. And so that's their band, that's their insignia. Um, check them out. Greg Graffin is the lead singer. He actually has a PhD, works for UCLA. Like, it's not ignorance. It's not saying anything bad. I don't do devil worshiping. There's nothing like that. Um, show you guys exactly what this is. So the Crossbuster is their logo, and it just simply means that you won't find religion here. I don't like putting out stuff like that, and I'm not trying to get into anything with it, but that's what that's about. So, I mean no disrespect to each his own. That's a band that I like and that's what that is. So for a lot of you asking, a lot of you like sending the hate and that type of stuff, I mean no disrespect. No disrespect to anybody. You have your beliefs, I have mine. It's all love, let's all be together and help each other out and call it a day, you know what I mean? So anyway, that's what that's about so you guys don't have to keep asking about it. All right, back to the engine. Okay, so I just got the chain off Wanted to double check before we get into anything. I'm kind of looking around, checking to see, make sure there's no broken, scored, any issues at all. Everything on here looks good. There's no knock sensor. The knock sensor goes right here. A lot of you guys, if you've seen on the back, there's a pigtail that kind of comes into the intake manifold underneath it, and it goes right here um, and plugs into the knock sensor. So. I don't have a knock sensor, we won't be plugging that in, but for whoever decides to get this engine, make sure you put on a new one, um, use the proper torque. I don't know what the torque specs are for it, each engine is different, but um, you'll torque the knock sensor down and then you know, run it out to here. So everything on it looks good though. I don't find any like discrepancies with it. You can see this is a heat tab that they put on there. For those of you that don't know about buying used engines, anytime there's machine work done, usually a machine shop will put a heat tab on the block. They'll also have one on the head. Here's one on here, here's one on here. And the way that these work is the button in the middle right here, if this heat's past 212, which means you've been boiling over, or 220, whatever, I don't know what the exact rating is on these, that little heat tab in the middle will actually expand and kind of like melt and so that's a quick visual way that the machinist or the company that you bought the engine from or something like that will know that you overheated the engine and that it wasn't something that they had done. Um, that being said, the engine that we got with Edson 
that's the first thing that we checked was the heat tabs. I know you guys heard in the other video that the heat tabs weren't uh, blown. There was no issues with it. We didn't heat it up to the point where it would have warped a cylinder head or blown a head gasket. So when we were talking about the heat tabs, that's what we were talking about. So going over this, we're gonna start the assembly stuff in just a minute. Well, the assembly stuff with this. So this is the parts that came off of an engine that need to be put on here to make it a complete engine. I have an intake manifold. I'm not gonna put it on though because they, they already, yeah, they already screwed me um, and only sent me one of the gaskets. This goes on here, so I won't be putting the lower on. Whoever buys the engine, though, um, if they want, I can give them an intake manifold. I have like 10 of them, so um, I'll give it to it with the engine. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to start at the lower part. When you put the headers on, obviously it covers these four bolts. These four bolts are actually for the mount. So we're gonna put the mounts on first and then we'll work up, put the headers on, and then we'll start putting on thermostat, crossover pipes and all that. I'll show you as I go. So we're gonna put that on now um, and then I'll do a walkthrough. I'll also point out they are directional. There's two different ones. So as you can see on here, how I have it laid out, if you're looking at the engine, this being the driver's side, this being the passenger side, you can see on the passenger side how the mount itself has four flat holes, bolt holes. So they're all the same length. If you go to the driver's side, you can see that they're not, that there's one sticking out. There will be one bolt. So know that the long one that has the one long bolt will be on the driver's side. So I'm going to put it on now. And to give you a look with the new mounts, you can see this one's on and this side's on. Notice how they're mounted. It's just important because if you guys are using this for reference, um, it's good to know which is in which spot. So those are on. So now I can move up to the next one. You guys will see why I'm doing it in this order in just a second, but we're gonna move on to the headers um, and now we're gonna put those on. New gaskets on and header all on we also put the cover on here this one has four bolts if you guys know anything about the vq heat shields these things because they're heat cycled so much you are going to break one so unfortunately this one doesn't have one in it it's broken in there but all the rest of them are in there and a lot of you guys run headers anyway so put headers on but the headers are on everything's done on the bottom end now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put the crossover pipe for the coolant um, all the way on. It kind of goes from here. If you guys are using it as reference, it comes from here, uses this bolt to hold on this side, and then it will come around the diamond shape here to here, and then it has the big coolant pipe that comes up here, and then we'll bolt down here. So, say hi, Mike. What's up? One thing I wanted to point out to you guys that I saw that I thought was absolutely nuts, look at this. Inspect rear main oil seal is not covered under warranty. How are you gonna give me an engine that's completely together and say that that seal is not warranty? For those of you that don't know about the rear main seals on the VQs, you can see it tucked up in here. It's not just a quick replace the seal. There's actually three bolts back here. You can kind of see them. That bolt to the block. And then in between the seal housing and the upper oil pan is actually another rubber seal. You guys can't just sneak these out because the rubber seal kind of saddles around the lower pan. It's almost impossible. I don't want to say impossible because I have seen guys do it, but I've tried it myself to sneak it out while it's in the car and it's, I mean, it started leaking. So I don't know how you're going to be able to have that. So fair warning for you guys, anybody that wants to buy the engine. Um, yeah, apparently the rear main seal is not covered under warranty but one good thing though is it is a new seal it looks like everything's fine on it so i don't know fingers crossed i guess before we put this water pipe on i want to show that there is a gasket that goes right here it's right to the right of the thermostat um, shares with the thermostat housing i do have this gasket for it but unfortunately the back you can see is like all tore out um, and no place around here carries this gasket for some reason i guess it's kind of rare whatever but the other alternative that you can use is um, the seal packing stuff from Toyota. This is what the box looks like. Looks like you can see that it says for super long life coolant. This is actually a silicone that you can put for coolant stuff. We use it on water pumps and that stuff at Toyota. So instead of trying to find that gasket, I'm going to use the silicone on here and then everything else will use the gasket 
uh, the paper gasket that comes with it as well as the thermostat. So I'm going to put that on now. Okay, so I literally just set it on, put the bolt here, kind of walked around, and then you can see there's the silicone, we call it FIPG in the Toyota world, it's form in place gasket. As you can see, RTV form in place gasket. RTV. Or RTV. Thank you, Peanut Gallery. Make sure that that's good and solid all the way around. And we'll have to just put the bolt in here and then come back here, tighten these down on the gasket, and then the water cooling pipe should be pretty much done. Hey, make sure you don't put too much RTV on there. It might break the block. <laughs> okay, now everything ran. You can see there's the 12 that holds this on. This pipe will come down and it'll go to the oil cooler. We'll put that on in a minute. Then it kind of comes around. You can see these are tightened. And then this one right here that comes actually from the front across uses a 10 there this is all snug tight the 12 there there is one other thing i need to show you i have the ground strap on the driver's side there's this little ground strap will go on here it's just a little 10 so i'll put that on and then the last thing we're going to do is the valve cover gaskets and i'll explain um, where you put the silicone on here and how to put this down Okay, now we got the gaskets all seated in the valve covers. There is one thing about these. Anytime that there's a valve cover leak, I recommend replacing the valve covers themselves because more than likely what's leaking is these holes or the for the spark plug tubes, the seals on here start to leak. They get brittle, you know, it heat cycles, and then these get brittle and it starts to leak into the spark plug tubes. Um, so these are brand new. One way that I do seat these over is I use a little bit of oil from, you know, just fresh oil and I kind of rub it on the seal here. That way it slides over on here, nice and clean and doesn't rip it on the way down. So we're gonna put that on. Another thing that I do is on the cam caps, you can see the break in here. There's actually some of the FIPG or the RTV. RTV. <laughs> um, so what you do is you actually, I'll put RTV on any of the places that have brakes on it like that. I might spill it over a little bit this way and up this way to make sure that it seals so when the valve cover pushes down then it'll actually block those that's going to be your point where it leaks on anywhere if that fails so little tip we'll put a little dot there and then we'll seat it all down okay so the rtv looks like that <laughs> this fucking guy <laughs> god damn it <laughs> fipg looks like that and now we can put the valve covers on. So this one doesn't have the oil hole, so it'll actually go on this side. And since those are all oiled up, kind of just push down with even force like that. And it kind of seats. And we'll do the same for the other side. Okay, now putting all the hardware in, you can see what the bolts look like for the valve covers. It's got this step on here. There is actually a torque spec for it. I think on one of these it shows it. Torque spec is right there. It's in Newton meters. I don't know what that equates to in inch pounds. But one thing that I have found out about this, I don't really use a torque spec on these to be completely honest. Because of this collar on here and it only has so much thread, it will bottom out on here. And when it bottoms out, I'm done. I have tried to do it with the torque and I've actually broken them off in there. So I try to run it down until it hits this little collar and then that's it, then I'm done with it. So I'm gonna tighten them all down now and then the valve covers will be completely done. So everything on here is all tight, snug on, I'll be including these coil packs with this. There's no spark plugs in there, so I'm kind of using them to block the cylinders. On here, I actually was wrong. There was two gaskets for here, so I'm probably gonna just set um, a lower manifold on here and then I'll tape it so that way nothing gets in the cylinders. And then the last thing we're gonna do is the oil pressure sender. It actually goes right here. Oh, we have the um, housing here too, but I wanna show you this. This is actually tapered, so as it goes in, it gets tighter, but I still like to put a little bit of the FIPG, RTV, RTV, FIPG, whatever, on here, and then I'll screw this in tight, and then that way there's, because oil does come out of here for the sender, so we don't want anything to leak from here. And then we'll put this 
on for the oil cooler and that'll wrap this up um, i was gonna put on the balancer here but because it's on an engine stand it's actually easier to torque it down so this will also be left loose um, and then when it's in the car it'll be much easier to be able to hold it i do have a chain wrench but the chain wrench eats up the face of where like the belts run on so i don't want that to um, get damaged trying to do it on an engine stand so that will be left loose but then you'll see the final product all together and it will be ready to go all right, now the oil um, pressure sender is in. I have it snug. You can see that there's the FIPG in there. And then the last thing that we're gonna put on here is the seal for the oil cooler. So the way that this goes, you can see there's actually notches on here that go around the block on here. So it'll actually sit just like that in there. And then this hose will obviously go on there. Um, this is a new o-ring. These do have a tendency to leak So if you guys are transferring anything over or if you just got this I would suggest getting a new seal um, They do leak so you have to put this on pretty tight. This is a 22 on here um, And then this will actually just screw into the block here and then your oil filter will screw onto here So this is the last piece of the puzzle. We're gonna put this on and we're gonna wrap this up I also made a note here that this is not tight. It's just finger tight but to protect the seal and then everything up here, I taped off. This is just sitting on here, but at least nothing can go into the cylinders. So, all right, we're gonna put this on now. And that's it. Full walk around. You guys can see everything's put together. Pretty much ready to go in a car. You'll have to transfer over some of your stuff, but besides that, it's about ready to go. All right, and a lot of time has passed. I haven't forgotten about you guys, however, if you guys have watched my story today, Mike's story today, Q's story today, Aaron's story today, you know that we were at the house chilling. Uh, we were working on the 300ZX trying to figure out the clutch issue. So it is still currently here. It's about nine o'clock. Mike just left and we wrapped it up. Barbecued today, had a really good day. So I'm gonna wrap this video up so I can get in there and edit it and you guys can see it for tomorrow. So. I hope today was instructional. I hope it was able to help you out on something. If you have any questions, you guys know you can always DM me. You can always um, hit me up on my Instagram or the YouTube. I try to get back to everybody that I can. And uh, yeah, so I don't got much more to say. I'm gonna go in and edit. Hope you all had a good weekend and I will talk to you in the next video. Peace.